Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of What If on Sea of Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today, we've got two extra special guests once again. We've got George and Craig Seibert from the Music Musing podcast. Guys, hello. Welcome back to the show. Appreciate having you. We love being on it. Good to be back. Love being here. It's always a good conversation with you, Pete. That's right. That's right. We, whenever we get together, it's uh, a lot of good chatter, which is awesome. So, so today's what if question was actually submitted by a couple of our viewers. And the, the what if scenario we're going to try and play out today is what if John Bonham, drummer of Led Zeppelin, did not die on September 25th, was it 25th? September 25th, 1980. And Led Zeppelin had stayed together continued doing that tour for In Through the Outdoor and actually kind of kept playing music throughout the 80s and maybe even beyond. So what do you guys think? What happens what, if, if Bond never died? Would Led Zeppelin still be around today? What would have happened in the 80s? I mean, there's so many different things you can kind of point to and, and ponder about. Uh, I don't know. What do you, got, when do you guys want to start? I'll, I've thought about this. Well, since, since you brought it up, I thought about, I thought about it a lot. I've been thinking about it a lot, actually. and. You, 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 I, I kind of drew a comparison like to Black Sabbath. Like they, they went into the 80s and they're still making music. And then, you know, Ozzy with, you know, problems with Ozzy and then, you know, kind of separated and uh, Dio took over for a while, you know, in the 80s. And it's, I think you'd almost, I, I imagine liking it to that because I don't think those bands from the 70s. 70s like that because most i mean only by comparison most of those bands i mean even if you're leaning towards corporate rock the journeys the bad companies they all their singers and the bands kind of the infighting got the best of them so i even if bonham had lived i don't know if led zeppelin would have maintained that sort of peakness through the 80s but you could argue that their peak time was already ending, like when they released that Into the Outdoor album, which I like, but that's not peak Led Zeppelin. Well, and I had read that he, like, they hadn't been in the studio for three years. Like, 77 was the last time they were in the studio. And in, like, 80, they were taking him back. They were recording music when he died. Um, it was, like, one of the first couple of days they were back in the studio, um, to record new music after three years of, of not being around each other much. Yeah. So I think, I think the, the end was already near maybe. So I think that, and you know, the letter that they wrote, you know, out of respect for Bonham and his, you know, his family and our fans were just, we're done. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, if you look at a lot of the bands around the time, you know, we're talking, we, we, just talked a little bit earlier about you know van halen and why you know they switched singers and why did ozzy leave and you know bon scott dying and you know a lot of bands kind of went through those morphs uh, late in their career or i guess uh, how long have they been around they've been around for four or five years since they started at that point right i mean when they start 70, 72, 72 also it, it was quite a few years then i guess into it but i i never you never got the feeling that there was any egos in that band. They, they all felt like they were just mellow people, period. So when I look at the, you're making a face. I, Sharks in the hotel room. Just saying. Well, okay. I'm talking about with each about other. Mellow. I'm That's talking about that. with each other though. With each other. Yeah. Well, you know, and these guys, uh, if, look, let's go back to the timeline quick. So, Technically, I believe it was 69. So okay. they're, they, were, they were together as a band for a decade, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of crazy stories, but I, I get what Craig is saying here. They right. weren't, they certainly didn't come across like an Ozzy Osbourne. Or oh, like no. Richard right. Mick right. Jagger. I mean, these guys, as notorious as they were for a lot of stuff, and they were, there was that kind of like mysterious edge to Led Zeppelin. You know, you had John Paul Jones, who was the quiet guy. You had Robert Plant, who on stage was like this vocal god, but he really wasn't. He didn't think, come across as flamboyant off stage. I think Bonham yeah. was the guy. Who, yeah, he's the, the raging drunk, loudmouth, get into a fight type of guy. Jimmy Page was the guy. He was off, you know, getting drunk or shooting up or whatever, and yeah. picking up teenage girls. I mean, that's what he did, right? Dabbling in the occult, but but not a like flamboyant. Um, 
I, I totally get where you're coming from here. Yeah, I, I just feel like they, they, if I had to pick a band from the 70s and, and you know, moving into the 80s that were introverts, I would say that Led Zeppelin for me would be a band of introverts. They, they, you know, even if you, I don't know if you've seen the video, um, this might get loud with, um, it's got uh, The Edge, it's got Jack White and um, Jimmy Page. And they're all kind of conversing about guitars and sound and stuff. But every time they show Page, he's so quiet and reserved. And if you watch some of those older videos with them on stage, he's so into his music that he could care less about anything else. So I, so I would say if <laughs> I would say if Bonham hadn't died then, he might die in the next couple of years, anyways, because like you said, he, he was on a pretty quick road downhill. That would be my point. It's like if he didn't pass away in in you know 1980, would he have made it to 83 or 84? We have no way of knowing, but he was right. definitely the path of destruction, right? Yeah, and and I think that probably would have played into them at, at some point in time finding somebody else to take his place. If you look at the, you know, I think they talked to like the last year or two before that, it just kept getting increasingly worse and worse that he was drinking so much more that if you look at, you know, look at a start of, of Metallica, you know, why did Dave Mustaine have to leave? Cause he was drinking all the time, couldn't keep himself right. together. So I think honestly, in my opinion, I think Led Zeppelin might've actually went on and I think they might've replaced him with somebody. Well, I, you know that's a good point, too, because let's look at, we're going to go back to Black Sabbath here for a second. So even after Ozzy left and they replaced him with Ronnie James Dio, the other original three members stayed intact. But because their drummer, Bill Ward, had such a horrible drinking problem, he eventually, they had to get rid of him. Exactly. Right? Because right. he couldn't play anymore because he was such a mess. And they got another drummer and they continued on. And Bill would kind of pop back in and out of the band a couple times over the years. But for the most part, they went on without him. Yeah, I, I think go ahead, brother. I think though that Led Zeppelin, I think though the the what I got or what I still continue to get from from the statement they released when he died, I think those four guys were Led Zeppelin. I think that I don't you thought David Lee Roth was Van Halen. No, no, I I that's the, the mystique that was Led Zeppelin. I think they were different in that way. They had to have those other three guys around each other. Like Plant had to have, you know, Paige and Bonham. They had to have those other guys, those three other guys' faces in front of them to make that band work. Personal opinion. I and think, I don't think, I don't think they could have replaced one or you couldn't replace one or the other and it, and it still works, still be Led Zeppelin. Now, you got to wonder too if they thought maybe the best that what we have to offer already came and without him, we can't be ourselves anymore. And what's the point? Cause I mean, let's, let's face it that right. the outdoor album that, like I said, my opinion, not a bad album, but that's, that ain't classic Led Zeppelin. And were we going to get anything better than that? If they would have continued on, who knows? Well, but but I, we, we just kind of had this conversation about kiss too. I mean, they, they made a disco album, but they bounced back pretty good. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those bands from that time frame, you know, kind of had that swing into something different. I mean, if you, again, look at the Beatles, they went into Sgt. Pepper and had this really weird concept album and they come out of it, you know, what, well, I guess not too much after that, but they had a really good solo careers after that. I think that would have been ACDC, you know, they get towards those really off albums in the eighties and they come back with Thunderstruck. I honestly think that it, that that Led Zeppelin would have continued on, and Led Zeppelin would have started writing some better music. But I really don't think they would have done it with him. Period. Well, there's another I, factor that we're not that we haven't touched on. Though. If he would have sobered up. <laughs> but for, let's forget Bonham for a second. Okay. okay. Jimmy Page was a mess at that time. He was oh, yeah. drunk, he was a heroin addict. And Train wreck. Right. If you look at Jimmy Page post the Zeppelin breakup. I mean. He forms this super group, The Firm, with Paul Rogers from Bad Company and Free, Simon Kirk, I mean, that's Simon Kirk, and um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, Chris Slade on drums, yep. Miami, uh, Tony Franklin on bass. That's a super group right there. And they made two decent albums. But why wasn't that band the biggest band on the planet? Because Paige was a wreck. Mm -hmm. A wreck. And what has he done since then? He's been the most invisible guitar hero of the last, you know, he pops up every now and then, but why is it that he hasn't been able to really do anything with his career since 
since the firm and a lot of people can count the firm as a failure. So does a lot of it have to do with that? If they I, would have continued on, would they have been any good? Because then all of a sudden you've got two complete disaster cases in that's Cade true and Bonham. So was this breakup, if he would have lived, was this breakup eventual anyway? Was it good? I think, I think that was plants. I think that was one of the reasons I think plant was maybe looking for a way out. I mean, by and by, did very like, well for himself. He's really the only guy who did, right? Yeah, true. I think I think he was looking for a way out because he's like, you know what, Bonham's a mess. Uh, it, it, to me, unless those guys would have, so I mean, you could say um, Jimmy Page. They did Coverdale Page, and I think I looked that up. It was like ninety two, and that, um, quite frankly, that was that's the best thing he's done since Post Zeppelin. I, I like. It. Yeah, I like that. So, so did I. It, it was it was good music. I like David Coverdale anyway, and I think that was a good. I think it was a good fit at that time, early '90s, when not a lot of good stuff was happening. Grunge was taken over, but I think it was a it was a quality album. I really do. But like you said, he's he's been invisible, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Um, he did those couple albums with Robert Plant and uh, you know the the Page Plant albums, and those are decent. But you just got to wonder if that was Robert just doing him a solid and saying, Hey, let's, let's do something. Let's make some money. Bro. Yeah, let's put some money in our pockets. <laughs> the spirit of things. Let's do it. But that doesn't last long either. So right. you know, play, right. playing with the black crows and has he done anything since he played with the black crows and the, the little Zeppelin reunion thing they did uh, back in what, 10 years ago with Jason yeah. drums. I, you know, I don't know. It's just, I, I personally have a hard time thinking of Led Zeppelin in the frame of mind of the Zeppelin that we knew them as in the seventies doing much of anything in the eighties, whether Bonham died or not. I just, I just, I just have a hard time visioning it. But that, that plays into what we are. What if that we started with, you know, the grunge thing, would they have, if they lasted through the eighties, would they have died off too? Or would they have, would they have maintained that notoriety based on like a Led Zeppelin or a kiss or a ACDC that, that had that had troubles, you know. They're they're huge in the seventies. They kind of filtered through the eighties or whatever. And then would there have been a resurgence? Maybe like if you know Bonham and Plants or uh, Page sobered up, and you know got got some help or whatever, and got back and re you know, what would it still would have still been there? Because Black Sabbath has made you know they made new music with Ozzy recently. Yeah, it's it's you know okay we get it you know you're but it's now we're talking word, you know, heavily into the 2000s. We're almost 20 years into the 2000s now. And those bands are 70 years old. The, the, the members are 70 years old. So now it kind of, you know, would they've, if they started in 69, it, it is literally 2019. 50 years. Yeah. Is yeah. It, I, I don't, I don't know. I, it's, you know, we do this what if when we sit and talk about, you know, wh where would these bands be? And we obviously don't know 100% you know, oh, no. sure what would, what would happen. But I, I just, I look at bands, you know, you talk about being a mess and, and having um, a plant be a mess and, and or not plant, um, Jimmy Page being a mess as well. But you also look at bands like Aerosmith who, you know, <laughs> they got the nickname, the Chemical Brothers. Yeah, I right. mean, I, and they were a mess, but they continue to make really good music. Yeah, they cleaned up, but you, uh, George, I think you even just mentioned that a second ago. You know, what if they had cleaned up? If they would have cleaned up, would that, you know, would that have turned them around? Would and, that have made the music worse? Well, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly. I mean, you, I guess the Aerosmith after they cleaned up, we got what? Um, uh, oh. Ragdoll. A lot of crappy albums. <laughs> a lot yeah. of crappy. Well, they were big hits in the 80s, but they were a lot of crappy albums. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, you know, when you look at, at, at the, a lot of the bands that traditionally come out of the 70s and either dropped off or replaced people or actually continued making music like ACDC or something, I, they did pretty well for themselves. But uh, it, it, is that because of the notoriety of their name? I mean, of <laughs> Led Zeppelin was, wasn't a notor notoriety name. No, that's or, what I'm talking about. Would they have been made? Would they have made? Would the quality of music, do you think the quality of music would have maintained based on this being Led Zeppelin? Or I like, do. Or like uh, Black Sabbath, you know, they made music with Ronnie James Dio. and I honestly think they would have. I think that a lot of their sound was based around Bonham's drums. So even yeah. if you listen to Into the Outdoor, which isn't, a, you know, obviously one of their, their better albums, 
his drum work and that was still yeah. really good. Yeah. Well, but I mean, you know what that album was missing? That album was missing Jimmy Page, quite frankly. True, true. That's true. So that just tells you who the weak link, the weak link was at that point in time. But yeah. I'll say, let's look at those first couple of solo albums that Plant did, which are kind of Zeppelin-ish. So how, would it, let's say you give the reins to him to do a bulk of the songwriting and kind of have him be the guy to kind of guide the band into the 80s. What about if you had John Bonham and Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones playing those songs or similar songs? I'd buy it, right? I, oh, I would too. But would you buy it because the music was good or would you buy it because it was Led Zeppelin? Well, kind of like, like Aerosmith. Aeros I mean, okay, would you buy it because the music is good or because the notoriety of of I mean, I, I didn't buy the Aerosmith 80s albums. But <laughs> well, I, I would have loved to have bought them if they were good, but I was like, geez, you know, so. An actual relation here. I'll give you an actual relation. I, George, you know how big of an ACDC fan I was in, in sure. early high school, late high school, you know, a couple of years after. I was buying box sets. I was finding their, their import albums and everything like that. I did purchase albums like Flick of the Switch and Fly on the Wall. And listened to them and tried to convince myself that, that it was the same ACDC and that I was listening to, to, to good music. It wasn't until Razor's Edge actually came out that I started really liking them again. So I bought their music based off the notoriety that they had initially for me and for, you know, in general, they, they were obviously a, a big hit band anyways. Um, so I, I think that people that bought Into the Outdoor would have bought the next album by Led Zeppelin. Sure. sure. Oh, yeah. They people bought the next Black album, Sabbath so, album. So, so if you're talking about money and sales, I think they would have continued another two or three albums before people finally got sick of them. If they were making bad music, if they were started, you know, turning themselves around and got out of that, you know, experimental phase within the outdoor and and you know that that different sound. If they had turned back around, kind of like ACDC did, I think they could have actually went well into the '80s, maybe even the early '90s. Yeah. Personally, yeah, <laughs> you know, you we can devils. I mean, you could play. You could argue both ways. I could argue both ways. It's to me, it's. I think the notoriety. At some point, the the talent trumps the notoriety. But Led Zeppelin had the talent. All yeah, they did. Members were that good, and I don't think it would have worked if they would have replaced him and kept going. I just, I don't. What wouldn't have worked though? Would it would have would have been the would have have been the band working together or the music itself? The collaboration, yeah. I think the if, if that's what you mean by the, the yeah. band. Itself, Did they need I, Bonham to write music? No, they needed Bonham to to record the music to be. They needed the Bonham stomp, I think, is what. Yeah, they, they just needed that moxie. Music. I think. I mean, there's other players that kind of you know at the time were similar. I'd like I think. The common rumor, and I don't know how much truth there is to this, but the common rumor that was that they had approached Cozy Powell uh, initially, wow. one of my favorite drummers of all time, yeah. to um, to replace Bonham. But they they announced that they were not going to continue like two months. He died. Bonham died at the end of September. They announced in December that right. they were gonna. That was it. So plenty of time for them to think about it and maybe contact some people and say, hey. Is this what we want to do? So personally, I would have, I would have liked to hear a Led Zeppelin album with Cozy on drums, personally, because I think if they were going to pick anybody, he's the guy to do it. But I, I but, think sometimes that, that childhood bond, knowing that person, knowing, like when you don't have to look at your drummer for the, you know, to start a song or, or to, how you're going to end the song, or he knows, or he's played, you guys have played together for so long, and you got that. Can sometimes that chemistry can't be duplicated and i think like i said with those four guys i think it was different where i don't think it would have worked even if they would have even if he would have stayed alive i think they would have continued i think they would have been i think it would have been led zeppelin i honestly do because you're gonna have the 80s and if they if if they sort of sober up or whatever you want to call it you know like like aerosmith did, they had a resurgence in the early 90s i think led zeppelin would have done the exact same thing i do not think they would have continued with a different i don't think it would have been worth continuing i shall say it that way with a different drummer with a replacement drummer but if he would have stayed alive i think that chemistry was still there and if they but they would one or both of the you know um page and bottom would have had to sober up at least 
sort of for it to keep going, making good music. Yeah, so, think, go ahead. Yeah, correct. No. So, we, we talked about them being together for a decade, and you know there wasn't any there wasn't any big stories about fights or people with bad egos or you know possible replacements of people. W- would that have surfaced had they continued on and and kept making hits? Would that have? W- would you think there was a, any egos in that band that would have started clashing with each other where they would have had to replace? Say, let's just do one scenario. They they all get sober. They start writing. They get out of the into the outdoor phase. They start writing some pretty good music again. Do egos play at that point? It's just they've already been together ten years and didn't have too many problems. Yeah, so now they're they're in their thirties and going to on their, in their forties and yeah, I, I don't know. I doubt. I mean, look at the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've had their jealousies and their little minor skirmishes over the years, but that band was always Mick and Keith's band, right? That's just the right. Way it was. And I think ultimately this Zeppelin was always going to be Jimmy and Robert's band to an extent. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I think if, if there's any kind of, if there's anyone in that band who's going to fit the category of all of a sudden having an ego in the eighties, I think it would have been plants personally. Really? Yeah. That's just because yeah. he seemed to, he's always seemed to be that guy that puts the, uh, the kibosh on any potential rumor. He's always the guy that had to be convinced that, you know, let's do a reunion show or let's do this. I, I just, I sensed that he knew that he had a solo career ready and waiting out there for him. And he did. And I think, and again, I'm not saying this is definitely what might've happened, but I think if we're going to kind of pin that potential ego trip on someone, I think he might've been the one to go down that route. I don't know. Just kind of. He always seems like the, I, for lack of a word, the mouthpiece of the band. He always seemed like, you know, that, that, that guy. And I, I'm, I kind of agree with you to a, to a great extent. Peter. I think he was, you know, it had to go through him. And I think if they would have kept going, I think his head may have gotten bigger as, as the, as, as it went on. Yeah. You, just want, you wonder if he wanted to be that guy, but maybe right. early on he really wasn't. And that's what I think it, with, with Bonham dying I, and um, Paige being a mess. I think he's like, you know what, this is my way. This is it. This is my way out. I can still do what I want to do. I can still make music with other people can still put out some good stuff here and there. And I think, you know what, that's served its course. I've, I'm solidified my place in history. And I think he knew that then. I think he realized that that ship sailed. That was a one and done type of thing. I think that was a, that band only, those four guys only. And it wasn't going to work with anybody else. He's like, you know what, I'm just going to cut my losses and, and never look back because, you know, you got – money and royalty and notoriety for the rest of your life. And I, I honestly believe that. And if Bonham wouldn't have died, I think they would have kept on, but I don't think his heart would have been in it. The, the longer it went, I don't think his heart would have been in it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's one thing we haven't even brought up is that the, uh, the 1985 live eight appearance. So they attempted to oh, right, play right, right. that with Phil Collins on drums. Right. And I watched that recently kind of in anticipating doing this and it's a pretty horrible performance. I mean, first of all, <laughs> Page looks like he's completely loaded, and, uh, which he probably was. <laughs> he should, yeah. And 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 if you can if you can watch it, they did an interview with one of the MTV VJ guys after it, and you can tell that Page is. I mean, he looks like he's completely high on cocaine or something. He's just he's just you know big smile on his face, just like incoherently, just kind of eyes wandering around and everything. But there you can really see like Plant in everything he says in his body language you can kind of tell he's like, yeah, this was one and done for me. You know, I did it. We made everybody happy, but it really wasn't that good. And I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing. So yeah. maybe that was a glimpse of how, where Led Zeppelin might've gone. Not that pretty. And, you know, again, it goes back to Paige had the ready-made super group successor to Zeppelin with the firm. And he blew it with that. Yeah. So I, just, I, I have a hard time thinking unless he got sober that, anything better we could that we could have expected anything better from Led Zeppelin if they would have stayed together right and I think Plant saw that yeah I, I agree with you I agree with you yep. and you bring up some good points before when you say how maybe internally they felt without John 
this is a this is a partnership we can't do it and i remember specifically i know we keep going back to black sabbath all the time but i've read on numerous occasions numerous interviews with bill ward the original drummer from black sabbath when ozzy left the band and they brought d ronnie james dio into the band bill had a really hard time with that because right. he's really tight with ozzy and in his mind he's like black sabbath is with the four of us and as great a singer as ronnie is I'm having a hard time doing this because it's right. Not, His heart's not in it. Right. Exactly. It's like that, that four way partnership that, and the same, same thing. They've been together since 68, 69. Right. And you're breaking that. And to these guys, it's like, you know, it's like my brother's gone, you know, how can I you know, do this the same way with someone new? And the, the, just the, the human side of it, you lose somebody that you, they eat, sleep, breathe and, and you're with 20 plus hours a day or, or even for more. a decade yeah, for a decade. yeah for 10 solid years i mean that, that's got to be tough too i mean you know i mean that's that is losing a brother that's losing a family member and it and i think that that plays on people differently but uh, especially when something like that but i i to your point there i i think you know even if you bring in the most talented drummer out there um it i don't i just don't think it would have worked if Bonham would have lived, I think they would have still made decent music. But there would have came a point where they would have had to so one or both of them would have had to sober up considerably. Yeah. And I don't know if if Bonham's death put, um, you know, Page in a downward spiral further than he already was. By the time they got to, to Live Aid, you know, he was just complete trash or yeah. what. But um, he's made you know numerous appearances and he seems you know better but who knows you know i mean i have no idea he's he apparently been sober for many years now and he looks he looks a lot better he looks older obviously but um sure. yeah the 80s i don't think was very kind to him but I, I i agree i think that had been going on for many years throughout the end of the 70s and it just right. i maybe bonham's death kind of pushed him even deeper into it i who knows but he was he didn't look healthy at all uh anytime no. saw him you know in any appearance throughout the eighties. And so I don't know. I, so I guess the, uh, to kind of summarize this, this uh, cool little discussion, nobody knows. There's a lot of avenues that uh, could have gone if Bonham had lived, but uh, it's interesting to think about it. And, you know, there's no right or wrong here. And it's just, it's just conjecture on our point, but uh, you know, who knows? It's a good what if scenario, I think. And I'm having fun having these conversations anyway. So let's keep doing them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So cool. All right. So uh, all you viewers out there, if you have any other ideas for a what if scenario for us, uh, jot them down. We'll take them into consideration and uh, we'll try and do this again real soon. So guys, uh, let everybody know where they can find you here on the wonderful wide world of the web. We are on most um, podcast platforms as Music Musing with no S at the end of it. Uh, we're on Twitter at Music Musing underscore. We can, you can email us at musicmusingfeedback at gmail.com and you can find us under Craig or George Seibert, S-Y-B-E-R-T on most social medias. Don't, do we have an Instagram page or something we like that? We have a pretty, pretty good Instagram page going right now. Uh, slow roller, but there's a, there's a lot of good stuff on there. We try to update that every day, every couple of days or whatever and uh, uh, post stuff. But yeah, any, any social media platform, you can reach out, Twitter, um, the the link uh, on the Instagram, there's a link uh, to the podcast, uh, music musing at libson.com. Music musing dot libson .com. Dot Yes, dot that's dot us. Com. And um, but you can link uh, through the Instagram account, uh, search us out and we're, we're out there. So, and we appear periodically on Pete's wonderful sea of tranquility shows and, and so on and so forth. So it is right. Making these guys regular. So <laughs> look forward to your next visit. So, uh, Take care, guys. Thanks again. And uh, everybody knows they can uh, visit us on the web at www.catranquilly.org. Find us on Facebook. Participate in our daily polls. A lot of fun stuff. We're on Twitter. And, of course, we're here on YouTube often. Got lots of great stuff coming up. Tomorrow, Ted Nugent, Top 10 Songs. Don't miss Ooh. that. Questions Stranglehold. <laughs> Stranglehold. <laughs> Questions and answers. Also, hope to squeeze in this week. And then next week, we're going to be live from Rock Fantasy with a bunch of Top 10 Song shows with – Steve Keeler. So look out for that. So till then, take care, everybody. Have a good night and we'll see you real soon. Bye guys. Thanks, see you guys.